Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a happy carrot. Um, I think they're adorable, just like the other ones. Um, the broccoli and the corn. So they all kind of fit together, I think. So, we're going to have to show you how to make this. I was going to show you too, there. Uh, if you put um, Nikki Looms, at Nikki Looms on Instagram, she turned my kaleidoscope into a skirt for the figures and dolls and things that people make. And if you make one of those, this is the large kaleidoscope, and put it on the bottom of the broccoli, it does stand up. So that's kind of cool. I have a picture of it on my Instagram if you want to look at it a little bit closer. Um, but this guy, our awesome little carrot, um, I will show too, I'll just say this now, I will show how I made this bow. I had a quite a, people, a few people ask me. It's not too difficult. It's just, and I probably do it more difficult than somebody else would just because that's apparently my nature to do so. Um, as far as bands, because that's what everybody wants to know, there are only, well, depending on what you do with the eyes, there's only two wrapped bands in here. So that is a good thing because I know um, I've been hitting you with a lot of those lately for the um, the other figures. So in total, um, the orange, you would need 166 orange bands for the carrot and then there would be 94 bands for the carrot top. Um, then of course two pink bands, a black band or whatever for the mouth, um, two eyes which I'm using seven millimeter pony beads but you can use wrapped bands as well. So that'll give you an idea on what you need for bands. Um, not as many as the other ones too which is nice but of course it is a little bit simpler design. Um, getting the nice point on the bottom of the carrot was the hardest part I think. And a nice nicer looking top. I won't show you my graveyard of carrots where they look pretty pretty scary so um, it's also all on one loom so that's a good thing as well. But We'll get started here and we're going to start with making the top portion, the carrot top. Um, that way we can just plug it right into the um, center end cap in the top of the carrot. So one loom, it's in the normal setup and what we're going to do is make each one of these strands. I'll show you on one of my graveyard carrots, I guess. Um, it's just a strand like this that comes out of a center end cap. So how we're going to start, where's my hook? One band, you're going to put on your hook and wrap it around four times. So one, and then if you just grab both of them, that counts as four, technically. <laughs> so, then you'll take another band, put on your hook, wrap it around once, and then you're going to pull it through what you have on your hook. And wrap it back up there. Then we're going to do, pull through six more of these. So same thing on the end of the hook. Wrap it around once, and then pull it through. And do that, like I said, now it's five more times. Alright, so there's seven. You can technically do this on the loom by just doing an end cap that's four times around and then doing seven double bands up the loom. Um, but I actually think it saves my fingers a little bit when I just do it on the hook because then I'm not twisting the bands around the outside, which can be kind of irritating if you're doing them a lot. So you can just do this and then we'll put the hook aside for now and lay our bands for the fuzzy stuff up top. How we'll do that is we're just going to go up the center six bands. One. Like that. And then what we're going to do is kind of make little triangles off the side of our design. 
So starting the second pin up, we'll go down and to the left, then up, and then back to the center on the same pin there. And then we'll do the same thing but on the other side. So we'll go down and to the right, up, and then back to the same pin. And now to the other side. And just keep doing that. All the way to the end, including this first one. I like that. So you should have three triangles on each side. There's six total. So what we'll do is we'll turn this around and take your hook and the little stem part that we put on there. And what's on your hook right now is going to go on this first pin as our end cap. Like that. So when you pull this back, because it helps to see, you'll grab the top band, which goes over to this pin on the left side, pull it up, and then just loom out the triangle back towards the center. And then go down through here, grab that bottom band, which is in the middle, and pull it up. And then we'll loom out this triangle, so the top band in here, and the bottom band back towards the center, and then up, and do the same thing for each of the rest of the little triangle pieces. So once you get to the end and you flip over this last one, I just stick my hook down through the center, grab that bottom band, pull it up, release it from the pin, and pull tight to make a slip knot. So now we can remove this. one of the stems and these can either be you can tuck them back into the design or eventually they just kind of start curling over or you can kind of loop it over the first triangle and it just kind of hides in there because everything's just kind of it's meant to be kind of light and airy like the top of a carrot is so you can leave it long or tuck it in it's up to you so but if you notice I did three of them and you uh, can, of course, do more or less, but I like the three. So what I'm going to do is just stick my hook back through that center end cap that we had. Through all four bands. And again, pull up seven bands. So on the hook, double it, and pull up seven. Seven. And just leave that on the hook. We'll lay the bands again for the design, or for the top of the leaf there. Six up the middle. And 
and again the triangles. So starting on the second pin, make that little triangle. One more on the first one here. Like that. Then turn it around again. And then what's on your hook will once again go on this first pin. And we'll loom this out again. So pull back, as you can see in there, top band to the triangle, loom that out, back to where you started, then the bottom band, up, and around. Let's keep repeating this all the way up. And then we still need to do one more just like we did now. Um, I'll probably fast forward through it a little bit in editing, but you can always come back and look at the previous two stem leaf things to see um, if there's anything that you're missing. I know people ask me what color bands I'm using. This is um, neon green from Rainbow Loom, and the orange bands are the same. Or some from Rainbow Loom, too. So, again, the end, we have it flipped over. We'll grab the bottom band through the middle, pull it up, remove it from the pin, and make a slip knot. Then remove. Now you have a big long, long one, but you need to do it one more time. So just pull it apart until you see that circly center, and that's where you're going to stick your hook through to bring up your seven again. So pull up your seven, and then once I lay the design down um, and attach this, I will show you, or I will probably fast forward it. So be ready for that. Seven. And lay our bands one more time. Six up the middle, and then our triangles. Alright, so that should be all three of them now. 
You can, of course, make more or less, but I thought three was a pretty good number. And you can technically add these in after the fact, um, once it's on the carrot top, too. And I know I could have probably put these on, af all of them on after the fact, but I just kind of like being able to have everything on that I need to or as I go along, and then at the very end when you're closing it up, that's all you have to do. It's kind of nice. So that's all of the green. Like that. So now we will need some orange for the carrot itself. Um, if we want, we can go ahead and make the cheek row, the cheeks and the eyes ahead of time. So we have those. Um, the cheeks are just one band. Take it, wrap it around the hook, and then wrap it around the hook one more time both ends, and then two bands pulled through, and you'll need two of those, like so, one more time, and if you don't have the beads you want to use for the eyes like I do, you can just do this exact same thing but just with a black band. I'm going to use beads, so this is a piece of craft wire, but if you don't have that you can use a bread tie, um, just any piece of wire or a piece of yarn. Um, depending on how big your bead metal is, you could even use like a pipe cleaner, so it's there's lots of options. But I just take it, fold it in half, put a band, or two bands in this case, in the fold. Take my bead, put both ends of the wire through, and just pull it down onto the bead into the middle. And then I have eye beads. These are, again, 7 millimeter pony beads. They're not quite as big as the normal ones you usually buy. They're just a little bit smaller. So we have those ready to go. So now we'll start with the rest. I'm going to use the wrong side of the loom. I just think it's a little bit easier to um, get to the pins while we're making this guy. And first we're going to drop six bands onto each pin in a hexagon pattern. So I will say that at the beginning that's the only part that's kind of um, difficult or goofy or kind of you're messing with stuff, but otherwise after that I think it's pretty straightforward. So six bands and just drop them around the loom. And if you drop more or less then it's not a big deal either because you can always add them in. Like so. I think I got all six on each one. So now what we're going to do, once you have those bands dropped, is two bands and everything is double banded. So um, if I say band, I mean two for the rest of this guy. But two bands are going to go out in a starburst pattern. So starting from the center, just go to the outside of the little hexagon all the way around. Now, our little leafy green that we made earlier, we have that center end cap, and we're going to use it in the center. I'm going to leave it laid out like this for now, and then later on I'll probably tie it up so it's not easier to move around as we're going, so that we can see where I'm going to end up putting, pulling up two bands between each 
leaf, I guess. So what you'll do is you go in and you'll find the top band. I usually have to kind of move these stems around a little bit. We find the top band, pull it back towards itself, and grab the next one. And just keep doing that around. Move those leaves out of the way so they're not tied into the top of the design. So now I have two, so I know that this front leaf is definitely going to go right next to this flip over. So I'll pull that over. Oops, and do the next two. Pull this one over. And this one. So now these are in between two bands all the way around. And it doesn't really matter what two bands or how you lay them, it's your preference. But it's kind of once you've done them, it would be really hard to change the position once you've started looming it out. So just kind of think about how you want it as far as um, position. If you put them on the back of the head, then there isn't any moving them back to the front if you change your mind. So, so now we are going to do, I guess, the puffing technique on all of these twice. So that means we're going to go through this little spot here where we flipped over. You'll grab the top two bands, pull it up like you're going to loop it, both ends on your hook, pull off what's on the pin, and replace on the pin. So that's one. I'm going to do it one more for a total of two per pin. So back on the hook, so now I have all them, and we replace. Like that. So then there should be two bands left underneath. I'm going to do that all the way around. If you want, if you're annoyed by picking up the bands underneath, You can go through, either grab a band and pull it up from the side and pull it up and through, or if you don't want that extra step of putting this back on the pin, you can take two of the bands off from your pins, put them on your hook, pull it through, back on both sides and then put it back on the pin. Either way works just so that you have what will be effectively three bands looped over to each pin around this X. I think it's just as easy to replace the band to the pin and pull it up as it is to do it the other way. And this way there's a little less chance, I think, of you losing it, although it wouldn't matter a whole lot because it's not too many bands to replace if it's goofed. So then once you've done twice, remember you'll have two bands left on the bottom. So flip this over. And do the same thing to the other side. up an extra one.
So like I said, there isn't too much fussing like this after we get a little further. Yikes. Pull too hard. Like so. So still two bands on every pin. So now what we're going to do is lay it's two bands still. We're going to go around the hexagon with the two bands. Let's push these down. And two bands around. bands all the way around. So now what we're going to do is you're just going to flip over the bottom band, which is part of the puffing that we did. So just the bottom band and flip that over all the way around. So you should still have six bands on the pin. So now push that down and we're going to finally take care of the other bands on the pin and we're going to puff out all the rest of these six pins again. So in through the six bands Pull up those two bands, take that off the hook, or off the pin, not off the hook, and replace it. And you'll do that for every pin around. All right, so once we've done that, push them down again, and we're going to do the two bands around again. Like so. And then once again, we're just going to flip the bottom band. Bottom two bands, sorry. That makes a little more sense. Like that. So 
so it should still be six bands on your pin. And now we're going to do one more row all the way around. I was going to tie these head parts up, but I think it's just as easy to keep moving them around. So. Two bands all the way around. Now what you're going to do is um, we need to flip all six bands that are below our top four. So if you don't have a metal hook, you probably want to flip a few at a time because they are a little tight, but you might not be able to flip them all anyways if you can't get a hold of them. So. Just take your time, because the more bands you're trying to flip over, the more likely it is that you'll end up knocking one of the top bands off. Oh, I should mention, this one I think um, you would be fine making on the monster tail as well. This one is um, pretty straightforward, but Obviously, to make the leaves, you'd still want the loom, so that's why I'd, um, I don't really just say make it on the monster tail because you still need the loom. But once you get to this, you know, the carrot part, you probably would be able to. I don't know if I would recommend it for the other designs that I've done already with the um, the happy corn and happy broccoli because I think that it, there's just too much going on, and I don't know if the pins are they're not quite the same as the loom to be able to secure it on there. So now you should have four bands on your pin, and now you can loosen up the middle here off of the pin, and you can pull this up. So it can start growing. So our next row is going to be our eye row, so you'll need your eyes, and we'll put those right here in the front. and the next eye and I lost a band through there so it happens when you don't hang on tight and then once you get the two eyes on you just go around the other four pins with two bands. Like so. So then we'll flip over all four bands underneath. all the pins. your pins down, or push your bands down on your pin, so we've got eyes now. Next row is just two bands all the way around.
so. Then once again, flip over the bottom four bands. Make sure your loom is not falling apart. Base plates definitely don't want to stick as well as they do after you've been removing them a lot. Push it down again. This next row is going to be our cheek row. So you can see even more of his face now. So cheek bands the pink wrapped bands or whatever color you want his cheeks to be. Put those on in the front, same place we put our eyes. And then four bands around. Once again, flip over the bottom four. Like so. Push your pins down, or push your bands down. Now we're going to add the mouth. And I'm just using a black band. Wrap it around your hook once, or whatever color you're using. You want to grab these top or the front bands, pull them off of the loom slide your mouth band down and then replace your bands on the pin like that so now we're going to do three rows of double the double banding all the way around so just like before but we want three rows And I'll probably fast forward at some point here. But we'll make one row. So you just lay the six double bands around. So that's one row. And how I keep track sometimes, like if you're getting really big projects or rows or trying to get it, this will tell me that I've done one row. Just putting a little band off to the side. So I'll remember that. So if I look and if I can't remember where I am, instead of trying to look in the design, um, I just look at how many bands I have laid down to tell me how many rows I've put on. Just a little helpful hint. So that's one. I have two more to go and so do you. So um, I'm probably going to fast forward through them and then um, I'll show you the next row is how we start to reduce down to make the point on the carrot because we're almost done. Oh, and I'll show how to make the, how I made the bow too. So stick around for that.
All right, so that's three rows. Nice little carrot going on here. So, my little bands are poking out there a little bit. Annoy me, but I'll f sometimes the bands, of course, they are rubber bands. They don't poke where you need them to, but we can push them back in. So, a lovely little carrot. Now what we need to do is start making the um, taper it down for the point of the carrot. And how I did that was on this pin right here to the right of the face, you have four bands on here. The top two bands, because everybody might lay their bands differently, kind of have to make your own decision here on how to um, do this part as far as seeing. But when I take this off, I can see that these bands that are on my hook are connected to this back pin right here. So that means that I need to pull them forward to this pin up here. So it kind of spaces that gap there. Then the bottom bands, although it's harder to see, they are connected to the front pin, so they're going to the back pin. Like that. And then we're going to go on the opposite corner from this one, so back here, and do the same thing. So find the top two bands, get them on your hook, and when you pull them off, you should be able to see where they're coming from. And they're coming from this front pin, so they're going to go to the back pin. And then these bottom ones are coming from the back pin, so they'll go to the front pin, like that. So now what we're going to do is flip over the bottom two bands. Just make sure it's the bottom two bands over the top of every pin. Like that. Then we're going to take two bands and we're going to just go on the four pins. So this first one will kind of be a long stretch to the back here. And then right across the back. And another long stretch to the front. And then right across the front. that. So then we'll flip over the bottom four bands on every pin. And the back one here. Like that. So there should be four bands on each pin. And what we're going to do is reduce this pin and this pin so they're not there anymore. So on this side over here, you'll grab the top two bands again. pull them off and figure out where they're coming from. Mine are coming from the back pin. So they're going to go all the way up to the front. And it's a stretch. Then these pins, or these bands on this pin, are going to go to the back pin. Like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure I have my bands separate here. So just the top bands.
So they're coming from the front pin, so they're going to go to the back. And then the bottom ones are going to go to the front. Now what you're going to do is flip over the bottom four bands and leave the top four. Like that. So there's just two bands, or four bands left on each pin. So I'm just going to take my hook, poke it through one side. I'm going to cover this one just in case in the back here. Stick my hook through, pull it off, and stick it through the back one. Pull that one off. Just kind of even them out on your hook there. Then I use two bands, pull them through the end, make a slip knot. And then I stick my hook up through the back of the carrot, kind of far down, or up, I guess, towards the top of its head. Come up behind. I stuck it too far down. Come up behind where our slip knot comes out. You kind of want it to be right there by it. Put the bands on your hook. but you want to kind of hold on to where the knot is so that you don't pull so hard and so far down that you lose the point of the carrot. So I can pull it out as far as you need to out of the back of the carrot, but just don't pull it too far down in the front because then you lose that point. And then they'll either slip back inside or you can just tuck them back in. So you might have to pull or kind of squish the top of his head a little bit to get the bands to go kind of give him a nice little rounder head there but that is the happy carrot I think he looks fabulous he goes so well with his buddies I think anyways so now uh, those of you that are wondering um, the bow I guess I probably do this a little bit harder than I need to but it just works for me. I just take five bands and I'll put them on the loom and just slide them down right on top of each other. Take another band that's going to be the center and you can use two bands too. Drop it on one pin Stick my hook under, grab it, wrap it around, stick my hook through, grab that bottom band, and pull it over to the pin over there on the other side. So we're kind of making a little slip knot type deal, but stick my hook under, grab that band, pull it to the other side. Put it on top, go through that band we just put on there, grab the bottom one, wrap it over, and just keep repeating that until I get to the point where there isn't much um, left to wrap over. I think, I know people just do the slip knot and then keep wrapping it around in their fingers, or but I just kind of I think this way looks little looks neat because it's um, the center of the bow then is very nicely made. But I'm just about too tight here. So that was the wrong band. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this side one more time. So I wrap that around one last time, grab that center band on the bottom, pull it up, and it makes a slip knot, and you can take this all off the loom, 
and you have a nice bow that isn't too stretched out. And then to attach it, once this is pulled tight it shouldn't really go anywhere. Um, you can leave your hook through it for now or just kind of go on faith. <laughs> but um, I take my hook and I'll go through the bow in the back and it will be tight if you made your design tight or if you wrapped it really tight which I usually end up doing. So if you hook it and then slide it through and grab that end that's been hanging there put that on your hook as well and pull through your band or bands for attaching. So like so. Kind of complicated I'm sure compared to how you could do it but that's the way I that's the way I work I guess so those of you that watch my videos know that. So you can either use a bow up in the top you can leave them hang loose or just wrap a band around the top. I'm going to put another bow. Just wrap it around the top of the carrot guy. This is a carrot girl and she will be Carrie. I know I forgot to tell you the name of my broccoli guy. I was kind of sad about that after I realized it. But I'm named my broccoli guy, Benny Broccoli, because, well, I like names that start with B that go with whatever you're naming. And I had a crush on a guy named Ben when I was in high school, so, and that was many years ago. But if I get a chance to name him Broccoli, then he's going to be Broccoli. If I ever make anything starting with an M, then I'll name him after my husband. But, this is the adorable Happy Carrot and his friends. Um, the happy corn, happy broccoli. So I think these are fun. I'm having a really good time making these so hopefully I'll be able to keep coming up with new designs. For some reason I got really stumped on this carrot which is was kind of so frustrating because the other designs were um, they seem way more complicated than a carrot should be but I was having a hard time with the head trying to make it um, have a nice taper and down to the point. So, but I did figure it out, I hope that, or figured out to my satisfaction, which is pretty um, picky sometimes, but I hope you're enjoying making these. I will definitely have some more. I think they're just fun and cute. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys watching my videos and the um, response I get from the different things that I do. I'm definitely enjoying that everybody seems to like these guys. I mean, I guess what's not to like, they're happy smiley foods, so... But if you make some, I would love to see them. You can tag me in your photos on Instagram, which it will much more guarantee that I will see it um, versus just commenting below. Because, like, if I get spammed with likes and things like that, um, it's hard for me to see all the designs. And I really do enjoy seeing them. I like seeing your ideas and seeing your interpretations, and um, I just think it's fun. So definitely tag me in your photos so I can have a better chance of seeing them. Um, or you can share them with me on my Facebook page. Um, it's Crafting Fantastic or Feeling Spiffy will find me. So the links for those are under the video. I will also have the band counts under the video for this design, um, although um, it's not quite as complicated as the other two <laughs> that I did. So hopefully this one won't be quite as bad. Um, we won't have as many people dismayed that um, they're having to wait for their bands to come. So trying my hardest to make them all in one loom. It's getting a little harder with some of the bigger designs, but um, I'm doing my best. So, But as always, thank you very much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see when I'm having new stuff come out. Um, definitely a lot of people who are racing to be the first commenter, and, and I do actually have the likes turned back on on my videos now. I think that I've gotten um, enough feedback, which I definitely appreciated so that um, you have that option now to like or dislike my videos. But thank you very much for watching. I definitely appreciate it, and I will have more for you soon.